Yo, what's up guys, it's your boy Zoidrake and we're back with episode 3 of basic tutorial on how to make a 2D platformer in Construct 3. We're back with episode 3 in today's episode we will be actually looking on how to make obstacles. We're actually, for our game here, we'll be making spikes. Yes, we're going to be making spikes that if your player hits, he will die. Which will be pretty easy actually. It's surprisingly easy to add things like obstacles that kill you and obviously once you see my tutorial on how to make a simple obstacle, I'm hoping that you can, you know, use the skills I show you to maybe f work on your own, like uh, edit a few things, change a few values and see, you know, if you can make your own. So we're going to double, uh, like like when you add a normal sprite, you're going to just double click on, the sc on your actual game and you're just going to type in sprite. I'm going to enter and you're, let's just say we place it here. Obviously, we're going to change it again to 8x8. That's kind of the standard we're going by in, to, in this game. You can change it to whatever you want, like I always say. Mm. And just why not? We're going to make the spikes light blue. And let's just say we're just going to make it like this. You know, just, just quick spikes, you know? You know, and then, you know, we're just going to make it a bit bigger. And, you know, that'll be our spike. All right. Okay, it's kind of tiny, okay, so let's make it bigger, we're just going to go into our properties like we did for all our other objects, I'm just going to change the scale, let's just go 300% by 300%, I think that's a decently sized spike, and we're just going to go into behaviors, uh, add behavior, and we're actually going to give it platformer, and we're going to remove uh, default controls in properties for uh, the platform object, that'll make it so that it has gravity, so if we place it, it will always be on the ground, uh, and that also means we can't control it and it's pretty cool and it can interact with the player much easier So now we can place that in our level one This is the level we want it in and if we go to our main sheet now We can close the ones we did yesterday We can close these groups and we can create a new group by pressing G and typing in Obstacles and hopefully I spelled that right if I didn't oops, it'll be a game feature Let's add to event and we're gonna click on player and we're going to glue on collision with another object and we're going to do the object uh, which we did sprite it's called sprite but now we're going to actually go to here and rename it by pressing f2 and calling it spike and now in our obstacles we're just going to add action and we're going to do player and we're actually before we don't going to do that we're going to go here and we're just going to copy what we did already so if we go actually we can do it in level change Remember we added, so when you change a level, it will set the player to the spawn object. So we can actually copy that by pressing Ctrl and C, clicking on here and Ctrl and Ctrl, using Ctrl V, which will just copy and paste it into here. And it will actually do the same thing. It will just revert our player back to the spawner object. So let's see how that works. Let's just click on level one as well, just to get it to run much easier. And just give it a second. Sometimes it can take a while to compose everything. And there we go. And if we click our object, our player will die. Okay, so now we got another problem. As you can see, it's barely touching it, and it's being killed. And this is an issue because we didn't give it a bounding box. So if we just click our uh, double click on our spike here, it'll bring it here again. And we can actually click this little button here on the bottom of our left menu, and it'll bring up this bounding box. This is basically the 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 detection where the player will hit, so that the objects will de detect. So if the object is the player is here, it'll detect it. If the object, if the player is here, it will not hit the object. But while it's inside this little box that we made, it will hit the objects. But obviously, the spike will only flex the player if it hits this part, right? So we can do right click and we can click uh, guess the polygon shape, and it will guess it. It won't always be perfect. So actually, we can just click on these red arrows and correct it to our liking. Obviously, you guys are going to do it to however you wish to do it because this is your spike. And honestly, do it how you guys want it. It's your game. I'm just showing you the basics. Okay, so we got. I would say we got a little pyramid uh, shape there. We can just close that. And if you have animation, which you can do by here, which I might do in another episode, it's just this menu is very silly, but I will make a video explaining how this menu works in a future date. Because it, it's very silly. And honestly, I would recommend maybe using an external software like a sprite or something like that, because it's much better, much better integration for game engines. So now we actually play our game and we're going to jump on the obstacle. It will only kill our player once it actually touches the bounding box we made there. As you can see, oh, we can't see. There we go. As you can see there. And that's basically how we made that obstacle. And it's, as you can see, it's extremely, extremely easy. Uh, we can add things like sound effects to our game as well. So I'm going to show you how to make sound effects as well. You know, you might want a sound effect when the player hits the obstacle. So we're going to double click on our screen and type in sound. 
Uh, actually, we're going to type in audio, sorry. And we're going to have this object uh, called audio. It's not going to be seen on our screen, but it's, remember, it's there. So we can say when the player interacts, we can do audio. We can go play. And you select the audio file. We don't have an audio file, nor do I have one prepared. But if you want to add audio, which I will not be adding right now, you can put it in sounds. You can put it in sounds or music. You can just go, go from your files. You can just drag a sound into uh, your pro uh, properties, the projects. And the only reason I'm not adding sound is because I have set up OBS not to record my desktop audio. So I will, I will this, I will might show this in another episode, a future episode. But that really is how easy it is. You click action, you click audio, and you click play, and then you click this drop down menu to click the files that you have uploaded in your music and videos folder. And you can just click on sounds and you can uh, right click and you can do import sounds and you could uh, drag and drop it into here. Uh, same for music, you can import music, drag and drop it into here. I believe you can use most file formats. I tend to go for uh, MP3s, pretty sure VAVs work, not WAV, that works perfectly as well. So that should be all right. And basically that's the end of this episode. We made basic obstacles. Uh, I could show you how to make other obstacles in another episode. I definitely want to go over how you make things like uh, like lasers, how you can make objects move and still hit. But in the next episode, I'm hoping to make some type of uh, enemy or more complicated uh, obstacles. And also how to polish the game a lot more. In the future, I'll also be making a video on how to export the game. So how you can go from menu and project and export and how you can use a lot of these different things to export to different platforms and i'll be going over that in a bit more depth in another episode but for now this has been a short one but a quick one a quick one i mean and a short one but very effective and it shows you how to add basic obstacles and it's very easy you can do the same thing for every obstacle and if you want me to make another anything in the next video make sure to tell me uh, in the comment section down below just so i know because i don't want to be making videos that no one's requesting because there's no point to it but anyway, my name is Zodrick. I hope you enjoyed. Make sure to leave a nice comment, leave a like, and most importantly, subscribe. Bye-bye.